Director, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Sinwamba. This morning we'd like to demonstrate how we can take blood pressure using a stick manometer. So I want to do blood pressure because uh, this patient here is hypertensive. So then uh, the, if you look at the indications for uh, blood pressure, mostly it's uh, those patients who are hypertensive and those patients who have come for uh, maybe actual screening or just uh, maybe OPD or even in the wild, you can take blood pressure. So there are so many gadgets you can use to do BP. So one of them is uh, called a stigma manometer. So this one is using a mercury. So that's why it's a mercury stigma manometer. Then you've got aneroid, doesn't use a mercury. Then you've also got digital, which just uh, shows you the figures, does not use mercury. So the common one that we have around is um, a digital stick. Oh, sorry, digital PP machine, but then we also have the mercury. So mercury, usually it's there for students to do maybe, say, OSC. So during OSC, you'll be expected to use a stick which uses mercury or aneroid. So the procedure starts always with hand washing, so you have to go and do hand washing. So in this case, you're doing hand washing for OSC, and you have to be just uh, quick, so you have to go there. Okay. And then dry your hands. So, as you do that, you have to go to the patient and talk to the patient before you begin the procedure. So, good morning, madam. Good morning. Yes, I'm student number two. I have come to do a blood pressure on you. May I please go ahead? Okay, is there anything I can do for you before I begin the procedure? Okay, so let me just prepare. I'll be back in a bit. So, you have to come here, you prepare your equipment, but in OSC you find it already prepared, so you can just really go and do the procedure. So what you need to do is, um, you have to just clean the stethoscope, uh, you have to clean with uh, screwed swabs, so each swab cleans each part of the earpiece, so you have to just do that, and discard. Another swab which you get, you have to clean the other earpiece, so you have to just do that and discard. Then you can also clean the diaphragm. In case the diaphragm is dirty, you can also clean the diaphragm. Right? Okay? Then discard. So you can uh, put the uh, stethoscope where you prefer, where you feel it's comfortable for you, but usually in the neck, you can put it like that so that it's uh, there for you. Then the next thing is you're going to do, you're going to uh, get the stick and then there's this button here which you should press. So it's easy for you. You can just easily go there and press. So when you press here, the sphere opens. So usually students find it difficult to open this. They will fidget and try to really pull it up and to think it might open. But what you do is just simply press this here. So when you press it like that, the sphere opens. So after it opens, then you can't leave it like this. Usually students will just leave it like this while trying to do the uh, BP. So what you do is it has another step where you have to push it further, then it will lock like that. This way it won't fall backwards, but students will just keep it here, then trying to, to read and all that. So it, you can push it further so that it gets stuck up to there. So meaning like this it's firm, you can continue doing your, um, your BP. Then there's another one which you have to also take care of. There's this button here, which is um, off, on. So there are some machines which have this here, this label, which shows you wh which side this will be off, that will be on. So what, what this means is that when it's off, it means that the mercury will not rise up here. So you won't see mercury here in these graduations here. So what you do is, you have to press it where it says on, so that as you pump here, you're going to see mercury going or rising. So this is how you're supposed to do it. When you find it off, at least turn it on like that. But there are other machines which do not have this symbol here, or this indicator to say you're supposed to switch it on and off, but at least you have to know that when it's this way, it's off, when you turn it on that way, meaning mercury will rise. So this is another part. Then another issue is on the cuff. 
for on the cuff at least you are supposed to press it or squeeze it so that you remove air which was there so this is what you do so when you get the cuff you are supposed to now go to the client this side then ask for your client to put maybe the arm there where she can rest so you can put your arm here okay so when she puts her arm there then you can have to look at this there are some uh, cuffs which have labels already to say that this goes to the left this goes to the right you know when you're using it so that the artery is there so if using left arm this will be there when you're using right arm this arrow will be on the artery or something so this has to be followed this is an indicator but in case you find a cuff which does not have this label at least you have to know where to put this you have to put it like that and press it there because students will put it like this during OSC. let me show you when you put it the other way around like this during OSC, and then look at this part which is supposed to be which is supposed to adjust to the other part then a student will start pumping like that then after pumping they'll discover that this is not adhering to anything it's just loose and coming out so they'll again attempt to put it like this and still it will still show this same stuff here when you see this it means that this cuff is not correctly uh, put or placed on the arm so what you need to do is follow the label okay that's what you do okay so in case that happens you need to remove it and press it to remove air like that okay so again if say for example you have to put it correctly you put it like this now we are using which arm the right arm okay so we can put it there and ensure that this part is supposed to adhere to this other part here so you can put it that way okay so in case your client your client's arm is small you will just find that only a small portion will be uh, attached to this part so you can put it like that okay then the next step you're going to have here is to be able to identify where the pulse is okay or the brachial artery which should be able to pulse it so you're going to identify you're going to have to feel here don't use your thumb but use your fingers these are the fingers to just go there so once you identify it's okay the pulse is right there so this is the part where you're going to put your stethoscope to listen to the sounds after you have pumped but do not put your stethoscope right away like this and be able to feel for the pulse you can't feel any pulse if you put it like this because this is not pumped the calf is still not pumped so you can't feel any pulse so you have to wait until you pump so what you're going to do the next step is you are going to get this part here as you can see this is supposed to be the part you're going to use to inflate the cuff so it has another valve here so this valve if not closed meaning that you can't pump so the way you close it you take it clockwise the clock goes this way it ticks going this way so that's what you mean by clockwise meaning you're going to close it going clockwise it goes this way so even clockwise for this goes this way okay so that's how you close it so in case you haven't closed the, uh, the this valve the calf will not inflate so what we usually discover is that the student will be pumping like this because the valve is not closed you will discover that they'll tell you that the machine is not working it's not functional they've told you it's not functional because this valve is not closed they have realized that the mercury here is not able to rise so they'll tell you it's not functional so the solution here is simple simply follow this valve and close it clockwise like that so you close it going this way then after you close it you'll be able to see the mercury rising so this is another step you have to follow after you do that now it has to be this point where you put your fingers there where you where you discover that it's pulsating where you felt the brachial artery pulsating you place there 
then once you put your fingers there now, try to pump. You'll be able to feel the pulse before you pump. So start pumping. Then at the same time, you'll be able to observe the mercury rising. So once you're doing that, okay, since uh, it's, uh, this, this bit, hot bit, just a little bit, don't press, okay? So once you see it rising, so now the issue is that where did you stop feeling the pulse? So for example, let me show you where it's visible. You stop feeling the pulse at 110 while your fingers are there. What you're going to do, some theories say that from where you stop feeling the pulse, simply add a 10, okay, 10 millimeters of mercury. So you can simply add 10. Some theories say add about 30 millimeters of mercury. So they are both correct, okay? So you can either add a 10 from where you stop feeling the pulse while pumping, or you can simply add the 30 millimeters of mercury. So both theories are applicable, you can use them. So in this case, I'm going to add a 10. So I stopped feeling the pulse at 110, so I need to be sure, let me add another 10, or even a 30, so that at least I have an allowance to be able to feel the, the, any, any difference and all that. So I've added a 30, so this is a 10, 110, then 10, 10, 10, so I've added a 30. From the 110 here, okay, this is a 100, 110, so another uh, 10, supposed to be 120, 130, somewhere there, so it goes up to 140. So that's what we do. Because usually students will just be pumping it until it reaches 300. But then the cough is usually painful, so you can't expose the client to such. So you need to just add a 30. You can't get it up to all the way 300 millimeters of mercury. So just add a 30 or a 10. So after you do that, you can get your stethoscope, okay? Put it in your ears. And where you were feeling the pulse, that's why you placed the stethoscope. And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be releasing this valve slowly, okay? So when you release it slowly, like that, you have to take note of where you're going to fill the first bit and the last bit, okay? So let's say I open. So you need to be observant of the readings, okay? So as you can see, it's even fluctuating. It was fluctuating starting at 110, where I first felt that bit when I was closing. So here, this is where it has given me the first bit. So that becomes the systolic, because the first bit was at 110. So now, if you feel the first bit at 110, where is the second bit, which becomes the diastolic? So it has to continue flowing. Okay. So as you can see, even the fluctuations stopped at 70. So, meaning that 70 becomes your know, diastolic. So, this is how you get it. So, you can, just for you to be sure, you can try to pump again. Go, since you thought it at, uh, or you had the beat at 110, that was the systolic. So, you can try to pump again. Go maybe at 140, so that you try to just confirm. So, if you feel the first beat at 110, that is the systolic. Then another bit which you felt, meaning that before the bits diminished, the last bit was at 70. So that becomes your diastolic. So your blood pressure therefore becomes 110 over 70. So that's what you're going to record. Then once you're doing that, you're going to clean again the speed. Okay? You're going to clean it there with a spritted swab. You throw another swab. You throw then even the diaphragm has to be cleaned, like that. Then you can place it back on the tray. Then here, what you're going to do is, you're going to now open the valve completely so that you allow excess air to move out. So you can open it completely, then remove it from the patient. After you remove it from the patient, you're going to squeeze to remove excess air. After you do that, then close the valve. Never forget to close the valve because when you leave it open and you pack the sphig, you find that the mercury has escaped. So you can close the valve to off. You take it to off, then put back the cow. Then everything, even the tubings, then you can close. Okay? So it has, you have to just close until that has happened. So this, like this, it's closed. Then you, you can record your BP 
which is 110, okay? We're saying 110 over 70, okay? 110 over 70. Then the SI units are millimeters of mercury, which is mmHg. So this is how we write the reading. In case you got 100, meaning you're going to say 100 over 60 millimeters of mercury. So this is, these are the, this is how you record the, uh, the blood pressure. Okay, so after you do that, now you have to go back to the patient and explain. Um, Madam Nancy, your blood pressure is 110 over 70. All the readings are okay, you're, you, you, meaning that you're taking your medicine um, correctly. So keep on taking your BP medicine because they're helping the, the blood pressure to be normal. And in this way, you're going to prevent any complications such as cardiac diseases. So thank you very much for allowing me to do blood pressure. Okay, thank you. You can even go home now. You are released. So at this moment, the last part is to hand wash. So you can do the hand washing and do that with soap, of course, then dry your hands. So thank you very much and uh, keep practicing. I know it's challenging to use uh, a mercury speed manometer, but keep practicing. Thank you.